This is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome back for video game news. And first up, of course, welcome back for June the 1st. First up, I'll be giving my thoughts at the end of this video on Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. First up, we have an announcement like right now in business sense in gaming uh, according to Business Insider game sales are up by 80% at Best Buy that's kind of crazy but no surprise next up we have uh, apparently it was a huge leak on a story for the Division 2 though I'm not exactly sure how much exactly story you're gonna have in an FPS, especially some like Division 2. Then we have uh, Minecraft Dungeons announced two DLC packs coming. First is called Jungle Awakens, and the second is called Creeping Winter. Alright. Then this week we're supposed to begin, of course, Big Info. And stuff on the uh, PlayStation 5 news and things this week so be curious to see what kind of info we're gonna end up getting like what kind of games will be announced officially for the launch because Xbox Series X has already done that and see if whether or not they're gonna mention the price point or not yet next uh, Xenoblade Chronicles definitive edition it did come out that apparently the defending version which is surprised because it's switch but then again not really too surprising it came out that apparently even though this is being called like an improved version or defending it's come out that apparently on average it's at max gonna run at 540p instead of like 720p or some but to be fair the switch automatically is not nearly as powerful as PS4 and Xbox One, so it's not really a surprise to me. Now, a lot of the main frame rate issues and things in resolution is mainly in handheld mode. They stated that overall aspects and play is going to be a lot better overall if you play it in dock mode. So, if you are planning on getting the Defending version of the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, I recommend them mostly playing the game if you can in dock mode rather than in handheld mode. Next up we have also the announcement of Games with Gold. We have uh, Shantae or however you want to say and the Pirate's Curse. Sadly it's not a huge group of super valuable games this month for gold. Uh, because that game alone is only like $19.99 at normal price. But it's a decent platformer series. Um, here's the one I'm most interested in. A really interesting looking indie game uh, called Coffee Talk. That's the other Xbox One game for free. Then we have two others. Uh, 360 is a on-rail shooter game. Looks like a harken back to classic on-rail shooters of the past. Looks interesting. And then there's one original Xbox game also, Destroy All Humans. And then we have for uh, PlayStation Plus, two games announced, of course. Uh, the first one from Activision and the second one from Electronic Arts. Geez, Sony, really? Uh, the first one is Call of Duty World War II. It's the first of the two games confirmed for PS Plus of June. And the other one from EA is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, the crappy one, which attempted, you know, the tons and tons of microtransactions and everything. I'm surprised it took this long to bring Battlefront 2 free for a month. Call of Duty World War 2 is a bit better value, even though I'm not a big fan of Call of Duty, outside of May Infinite Warfare. Um, still... I would say of the two games, I'm more likely to try World War II than I am Battlefront 2, just out of my pure spite and how I feel towards the EA era of Star Wars games. 
Next up, a couple of deals with gold. Just a few things that caught my attention. So if you're an Xbox owner or you have a PC. Uh, the first is a really interesting indie game called Fall of Light. It is on sale for $374. Then you have a Civilization 6 is on sale for $44.99. Not really that cheap. Uh, the Wolf Among Us, which is actually a pretty good game from the Tall Tale series of people. Um, it's $7.49. You have L.A. Nora for $19.99. Uh, the Prince of Persia games are on sale, like the original one, Sense of Time, and the two 360 games, and all of them are $5.99 each, so if you're a Prince of Persia fan, you might want to look into that. Um, the last of a couple of the games is called Lovecraft Untold Stories. It is uh, $8.99. Now, also some new games, of course, they have come out and stuff. Now, most of these are multi-platform, but one or two might be exclusive to Microsoft. First up is Minecraft Dungeons, of course, came out. And, boy, is the price good. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons is only $19.99 for the base game. Now, if you want the version that includes expansion material and stuff, the... Uh, Hero Edition, as they're calling it, it is only $29.99, so $30 for like the deluxe version, you might as well call it, though it's called Hero Edition. Uh, next, you have Pong Quest, basically a new take on the classic Pong game. It is $14.99. Then you have uh, Those Who Remain, which is a really cool indie looking first person horror game. That definitely has a sort of artsy style to it, and I'm actually really interested in this game myself. It is only $19.99, and that is definitely a game I'm personally looking at probably picking up. Because I actually love those type of games. Um, next you have a Decay Collection, which is uh, $14.99. Not bad. Uh, you also have Moonlighter Complete Edition for uh, $23.99. Borderlands Legendary Edition, which basically includes all the Borderland games. Uh, it is uh, $49.99. And last but not least, which is definitely awesome looking, is uh, Samurai Showdown Neo Geo Collection. It's not out yet, but it is coming out. I have not seen what the digital price is going to be on it, because uh, the only physical version of the game you can get is strictly from Limited Run. Limited Run is already sold out of pre-orders, and if you want to get it on eBay, uh, the original price for the Limited Run physical copy was uh, $59.99, but you'll have to go on eBay to get it, and it can run anywhere from $1 to $200. Yeah, thanks a lot, scalpers. Uh, but the number of the series, it's number 238 for Limited Run. But definitely, and I'm looking forward, it's a collection of all the classic Samurai Showdown games. It's like seven Samurai Showdown games total in the collection. That's definitely cool. I'm definitely going to probably end up getting it. I'm curious to see, though, if it's going to be like $19.99 or $29.99. 10 or rather $20 to $30 range. I would say it's probably what it's going to be digital. Uh, just want to quickly state, of course, 2020 has been an insane year. There's so much craziness. There'll probably be a book eventually and a movie on 2020, the craziness this year. Um, also, a couple of announcements quickly. Uh, there's a new movie review that I'm going to be working on soon. And this is it. And it is the newest Justice League Dark film. Definitely have been wanting to try it. Of course, rated R for a good reason. The first Justice League Dark deserve the R rain in my opinion but that is the next movie that I'm going to be reviewing and also an announcement about two weeks from now I'm going to be releasing another top 10 sales list which is going to be the top 10 
selling PS4 games. Now keep in mind those are strictly physical sale numbers. That excludes digital sales. So if you add in digital, ranks will probably be different. And quickly give just one or two minutes my thoughts on uh, MK11 Aftermath. And that is, in my opinion, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath is quite interesting. Of course, right now I'm uploading my playthrough of the story mode expansion. Um, so far, I've tried out of the three characters, new additions to the game. Uh, for me, I'll be honest, Robocop is probably my least favorite easily of the three, and I had a feeling it was going to be that way. Uh, of the new add-on characters, I would say I do kind of find it interesting, the grappling style of Shiva. Though gameplay-wise, I think I probably like... Fujin the most, personally. I definitely want to get better with Fujin, but I'll admit a little bias because I've always liked Fujin. I'm just glad to see him back in the game. But that is my opinion overall. I thought the story add-on was actually really good. The quality was there, and I liked how you got to play other characters. I definitely was happy to get to play uh, Sindel in story mode. was definitely a lot of fun. And the fact that you have two separate endings, a good ending and a bad ending, that's also cool. And yeah, I will be uploading both endings, so you can stay tuned for that. And stay safe, everyone. I'll see everyone soon enough. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. And stay safe out there here and now the beginning of June. See you next time.